All right, so the time has come for notching. Now, in your plans, you will get notch templates for everything. And it's pretty easy. You just cut it out. You line it up with the outside radius that we marked before we bent each tube. Uh, you measure it, mark it, tape it on, and notch it. It's that easy. I like to use frog tape or painter's tape just because it goes on, it's pretty sticky, and it comes off pretty easily, and it's inexpensive. Uh, you'll need a pair of scissors to cut out each one and your notcher of choice. Now, most of you know that this is the first thing I bought from Rogue Fab. This is a Rogue Fab Versa notcher, and it really turned me on to Rogue Fab as a company because if their notcher is this great, I couldn't imagine how good their bender was. And I was absolutely right. Everything they make is based around home fabricators and making tasks easier. The notcher I had before this just wasn't cutting it. Like you only had, you, you could only cut it from one side. This, you have full range to come around, all right? This angle right here is so important. Being able to cut not just on this side makes notching so much easier. And it's very well thought out by Rogue Fab to allow you to do this. That's crazy. You get an extra over 35 degrees of angle cutting from the opposite side. That means the clearance in your garage shouldn't be affected by your notching, which is huge. If you have a big giant piece of tubing and you've got cabinets, you can cut it from either side. You don't have to rotate it around or make it fit in your notcher correctly. So obviously with your notcher, you're gonna need a power drill. I'm just using a Harbor Freight plug-in 110 outlet power drill. Um, don't try to use a cordless one. You, you gotta have that, that grunt to get through that metal. And I have an assortment of, of hole saws here. Um, you can go to Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever. Get you some one and a half inch hole saws, one and a quarter inch hole saws. Rogue Fab, brilliant as always, has their deep well hole saws. That means you can get a steeper cut on your tubing without having to stop and cut the end off with your angle grinder to get a notch all the way through. You can see the, the difference in it. Definitely get more than one hole saw because you're gonna kind of burn through these. It's just the nature of it. They wear out. So that's it. Let's get to notching. So there's nothing saying that you have to start with all the bent pieces to do your notching. If this is your first time notching anything, then you can start with the straight pieces. There's no, no big deal with it. Now what I like to do is just get a bunch of little strips of my frog tape lined up on my workbench to tape all of my notch wrappers. That way I don't have to tear one while I'm trying to hold the wrapper in place. Uh, included in the plans is obviously all the part identifiers and then the start and end. Since each tubing gets two notches, there is a start and there is an end. We'll start with C29 just because it's a straight piece. It's pretty easy. It's getting notched. It's an inch and a quarter piece and it's getting notched to inch and a half. So we're going to use an inch and a half hole saw and it gives you the angles of each one. Now, since we didn't bend this piece, we have not indexed it yet. So get your trusty piece of angle iron. Mark your center line. And then you are going to measure. All right. So the measurement is 10 5 8 distance to the end. So 10 and 5 8 Now, like I said, on your straight pieces, it doesn't matter what's starting, what's the end. Now you're just gonna cut this guy out. Now I like to cut it all the way to the end of the paper, leave a little tail. And you don't have to cut it out exactly because we're gonna put a hole saw through it. Uh, if you are using an angle grinder, then yeah, cut it out and match it. Then this red line is your measurement line. So I just fold it right on that red line I'm gonna find my measurement. I'm gonna line it up with the center line because your, your cut ends have to match each other. 
as far as wear on the tube it is. It's easier without gloves. Then I get my piece of tape and I put it on there. Look at that. That is ready for the notcher. I'll go ahead and mark the other side. And that one is 9 and 13 sixteenths to the end on our line. There we go. Now, what I like to do, just to make it easier, this cut angle on this side is 50.3. So I'll just write on here, 50.3, and the cut angle on this one is 24.2. That way, when I go to the machine, I've got just a reference of what angles I'm cutting. Now, a way to double check this is written right on here, 7 11 16 distance to the second. So you can double check, make sure your wrappers are in the right place, by checking that right on the money to the second wrapper so this piece is going to be good all right so here we are at the notcher now obviously doing left and right at the same time is going to save you a considerable amount of time because your angles are going to be the same so your left is going to be 24.2 your right is going to be 24.2 you can set your machine cut both sides and then flip it change your degrees and cut both sides again and that way you're not resetting the machine so much so we'll cut the 24.2, right? So we can cut it that way, or we can come off a 90, and then you just lock it in place, slide your tube in. Now you can see that there's a short side and a long side. Orient your machine logically to that. And then just line the blade up to the cut wrapper. This machine gives you an awesome visual reference as to how exactly it's going to cut. There we go. One whole saw done. You can see it is an absolutely perfect cut. Look at the black line. You can see about half of it there. This ear is going to need cut off, but that's kind of a byproduct of using a hole saw and a notcher is cleaning up your edges. It's that easy. Just do that for all the pieces. All right, so now we just uh, clear out our hole cut, get our next piece. This is a 50.3. This is a pretty aggressive cut. Now, something you can do is take your angle grinder and cut this off. That'll stop you from cutting. Now, something I love about this Versa Notcher is that you can put your tube in the opposite side, lock it in, and it's an awesome tube clamp for if you need to make uh, those kind of cuts where you're cutting off a corner to get a good whole saw cut. Now you can clean your pieces up with the wrapper still on so that you can follow the exact cut wrapper. Careful for fire. PC29 is completely ready to go. Look at that. Now I like to put a little chamfer around the edge just to make welding a little more solid. All right, so now that you've cut your teeth on cutting straight tubes, let's talk about a curved tube or a bent tube. Now this is where the start and end diagram comes in handy. So you can see here that C3, the right side floor, has a short bend and a long bend. Let's orient this correctly. We've got a short bend and a long bend. So the start is the front. So when you get your cut wrappers, it's going to say start or end. We are doing the end. So we'll cut this out. And right on the wrapper, it says line up with outside radius. We marked the outside radius before we bent it just for this reason. It's two inches to the end. Line it up with our outside radius mark we made. Wrap it around and tape it. Now the curved pieces are not going to give you a distance between bends. 
Now this one is five and three sixteenths to end. There we go. This one is ready. And C3 is also your first piece that has setback. They're set back on pieces in the plans to make room for these tubes to fit into your machines. That was a big thing I learned from making the first one is that you can't just design something and, and everything come out perfectly. You have to design around being able to get pieces into the machine. All right, now what to do if you get a bad hole saw cut. Now I rotated this and I cut it short on purpose so that you could see how to clean this up. Now you can see here is the line that we should have cut and we have I don't know, a quarter inch or more of extra material that needs to come off. This is why they created angle grinders. And there you go. A piece that was poorly cut after only just a few seconds of time with an angle grinder and a, the template of a cut wrapper is now a well cut piece. Another fantastic tool that I didn't know about until my dad, well, I knew about it, but I was too lazy to get one. My dad just bought me one because he was watching my videos and he knew that I would use it a lot. So this cut is 68.8 degrees, which is a huge steep angle for a whole saw cutter. Uh, I ended up just using my angle grinder. Uh, be super careful when you do that, blade grabs. If you've ever used one before, you know how they work. So to save yourself some trouble and get cut, straight cuts with your angle grinder, you can get a die grinder. Now these can be had on the super cheap and they are well worth it. Um, I'm, I was a little mad at myself that I didn't get one on my own uh, before my dad got me one. Now with an angle grinder, an angle grinder, a die grinder, and just a bench grinder, you can have yourself a pretty sweet notch. Now, there's only a few of these that, that require a little more attention, so don't let this dissuade you. Now, here's something I do, just to uh, final verification. I've got a left and right side here, and you can see that they are symmetrical, the cut wrappers. It's just a final way to verify everything before you take it to the machine so that you know your parts are gonna be a left and a right. All right, so just so it is covered, um, when you do the cut wrappers for the roof pieces, if you are stretching it, um, you just have to follow the directions because the measurements for the roof is from the end. So just follow the instructions and your roof will be stretched. These are three inches longer because I'm doing everything three inches longer. Now the final two pieces, because the floor is done, the roof is done, now it's just C18 and C19 the uh, cockpit connector crossbars. Now our measurement here says 29 inches to the end. Now, if we put it at 29 inches, we're gonna have a lot of overhang. So we're gonna add three inches to that because we've stretched it three inches. So add whatever you're stretching to that, 32 inches. Now for the second side, 29 inches to the end, who knew? Which is gonna make it 32. Now, the distance between the marks, uh, it says 26 and three quarters. Obviously, that should be 29 and three quarters if you're stretching it three inches, like I am. If you're stretching it four, it would be 30 and three quarters, which means everything's lined up, it's gonna fit well, and we've successfully cut the pieces to stretch this three inches. C20 and C21, a uh, big setback. Just follow the instructions on the wrapper. Nine and three sixteenths to the end. Nine and three sixteenths to the end. This has to be close to this bend to give proper clearance for the upper A-arm attachment. Um, it, if it was long, it just wouldn't look right. So I gave you all this extra meat on here to clamp into your notcher so that you can make your notch from the other side, cut all the way through it. And that's where you see that there's a setback of six and three quarters. Ignore that, follow the instructions, and all your pieces will turn out 
awesome. So just to show you more about this setback thing, here is our cut for C20. And you can see it's really close to the bend. If we try to get it in here to make our notch, it's just not happening. It's not happening at all. So I added this extra length so that you can put it in the machine this way. And you can get an outstanding straight and easy notch. So I don't know how you guys work, but how I work is I kind of like to do an assembly line. Like I'd like to do a bunch of pieces, get them all taped up, marked, labeled with the angle that needs to go on them. And then I'll run them through the cutter. Uh, when you do something repetitively, you get better at it. All right, guys, I, I probably shouldn't be showing you this, but even I make mistakes. You can see that this one is a half an inch to an inch shorter than this one. This is not one of the extended pieces. This is just an honest mistake somewhere. So we have to rebend this tube, uh, print out some new cut wrappers, and just remake this piece. Uh, luckily, it's a short one. <laughs> Measure twice, cut once, and compare your left and right sides. If I had just compared these cut wrappers uh, before I made the notch, I would have caught this. So there's all kinds of checks and balances built into this building process that I didn't follow probably because I was filming it for you. So just, just something for you to learn from. See, bad piece, uh, rebent piece and a good piece. Everything's lined up. Um, it matches the measurements. So I, I'm still not sure where I went wrong, but it's fixed and it didn't take long at all. And there we go. After just a couple of days of work, we've got all of our tubing bent. We've got the main pieces notched. We've got our jig made. So the next step is to just start fitting these pieces onto the jig for the main chassis. Now I haven't notched the cross members yet because I'm too excited to get this on the jig and the cross members get put in place after the main chassis is built on the jig. We'll pull it off and finish it up. I'll see you guys next time and thank you for watching.